<laughs> Vidi, stop staring at me. Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Just turn the TV off. Ah. <sighs> Ah, Vidi is, he's just had a, one of his favourite bacon treats. They're like these little bacon, they're not actually bacon, but they're doggy treats, but they look like rashes of bacon. They smell really nice. Uh, I'd like to say I've not tasted them, but, <laughs> no I haven't. I don't know, I might have, I might have licked one. I'm generally not too fussy what I lick. So... But they don't taste like they smell. They a little bit, but not not in a way that they just smell nice. You know, if if someone handed you some food, a sandwich, and it smelled like that, you'd probably well, unless you was a vegetarian, of course, obviously, or a vegan, you might, or if you didn't like bacon, because pigs are dirty animals. Name a clean one. Name a clean one. <laughs> um, then you might not like them. But other than that. You know, once I knew, I've known a lot of vegans and vegetarians over the years, you know, during my Buddhist, Buddhisty time. And someone once said to me that they, they felt ill when they smelt meat. And I thought, even when I was a vegetarian and a vegan, I've, I've gone through that period and I've gone years without eating meat. I still like the smell of it. It's, yeah, I, the smell of a sausage, you know, oh, I mean, I, you know, anyway, this is not about veganism and stuff. This, my dear friends, is going to be, I'm going to take an online autism test. Da, 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 da. I'm so excited. I took my first online autism test probably 20 years ago. <laughs> so I've done a few of these over the years, but I haven't done one for a, for a while. So I I just thought it'd be fun, so I'll do that. Before I start or continue, stop. Try and don't be knocking the microphone, mate, please. I gave him a shower last night because he had these little bugs were jumping on me. I didn't know if they were fleas or what they were. They're very small. But I gave him a nice shower with his uh, flea shampoo. And since then, he's been not scratching or anything. So hopefully he got rid of them. I don't know what they were. They didn't seem, yeah, they just didn't seem flea, flea, if you know what I mean. But they were, like, absolutely tiny. I mean, if there's a chance, I mean, he does say hello to a few dogs, that something might have jumped on him from another dog. Or if he, he likes to go into the long grass at every opportunity. He might have got something from the cats, the cats go in the grass, you know, it might not have been a dog flea. Might not have been a dog anything. He might have caught it for me. I might have fleas. I mean, I haven't had fleas for weeks. I don't think I've got them anymore. Anyway. Uh, <sighs> so. My, I do have a YouTube channel. Which you can check. It's just just search for my name, Jason Newland. The every day or every time I make a new recording, I create a video, a ten hour video from that recording. And there's ten hours with a dark screen, so there's ten seconds of me, or ten seconds of the image of the video, and then it's that's it, and then black screen for the rest of the ten hours. Um, I make this recording available in six different versions. Ooh, oh dear. I had such a good sleep last night. It's very rare for me to just, 
you know, I'm a kind of a sleeper. I sleep now and then and just sleep and whenever. But I slept from... Oh, what was it? Just after 10 o'clock and I woke up at half seven. I mean, I did wake up a couple of times in the night time to do a wee-wee. But I think the last, or well, maybe once, I woke up about one thirty, And then went back to sleep and woke up at half seven. It's like, blimey. I felt so refreshed. So refreshed. <laughs> I wish I knew what it was that I did right. Because I don't have a trouble getting to sleep. It's just I don't generally sleep for long periods of time. And then I wake up and I'll have a sleep in the afternoon and whatever. I just, I just sleep whenever I want. But I don't, you know, it's not that I have trouble getting to sleep. I just don't, sometimes I just don't stay, stay asleep for more than a four or five hours. And sometimes I just get up, you know, it's things to do and things to do, baby. But last night I just slept all the way through and I was planning to get up at about one thirty two to watch the boxing live. But luckily the boxing was on Prime and I could watch it back. Anyway, they, it's recorded, so I just watched the whole thing when I woke up. The same was with the zone as well, they do that. But Sky doesn't. Sky, you've got to watch it there and then. Unless it's a particularly big fight and they might put it on playback. I guess it just costs some money to store it all. Anyway, uh, so I've got my YouTube channel. I do my recording six different versions, one without music five hours and ten hours without music and then one with music five and ten hours with music and yeah that's it the um oh it's a kevin mcleod music in the background um and the details of that are on the podcast let me just check i'm i'm correct when i say that on the podcast if you have a look Yep, all the details on the first page of the podcast. Background music, copyright free details, deep relaxation, Kevin McLeod. Stop standing on the laptop, Vinny. He's trying to type. Uh, Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0, license uh, creativecommons.org, licensed by 3.0, whatever, and promoted by Free Music bg.command chosic.com say but you can read all that and on the uh, podcast uh, if you'd like to support me you can support me by paypal if you if you would like to to cover my costs so right here we go man oh just to say let you know that molly is from what i can tell is on the mend and things are going well so yay Right, here we go. What I've done, I might do more than one of these just for fun, okay? And the one I've found to start with is Diver... This is the website. DiverseDiagnostics.co.uk And the, I've clicked on a link and it's forward slash autism dash test forward slash hash start underscore autism underscore test. But if you go to diversediagnostics.co.uk, the first page is, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, okay. Oh, no, I've lost it. No, it's, it's gone to, I've lost it, where? No, oh, there it is. Free autism, t yeah. Oh, come on, please. Take our free autism test online. So, are you wondering, or if you or someone you care about might have autism? Question mark. Take our free autism test today. 
designed specifically for individuals aged 18 and above. Whatever the results may reveal, please know that you are not alone on this journey. We understand how you might be feeling and our team is here to offer support and guidance every step of the way. Right, I should say before I continue that I'm not doing this as a joke, right? I'm not doing this as a making fun of people with autism at all. But in the past I've done these tests and I've always come up very, very high. Um, so that's why. It used to be Asperger's test or Asperger's depending on how you pronounce it. But now that term's not used anymore in the UK at least. It's now being on the autistic spectrum or autism spectrum. The autism spectrum, yeah. So I'm going to do this. As I say, I'm not mocking uh, by doing this. I'm just, I just find it very interesting. I might see if I can find some kind of other like narcissism tests. And uh, no, I'm not comparing the two tests. But I'm just saying, it'd just be interesting. I'm just trying to discover myself, you know, trying to find out a little bit more about myself. Um, right. So it says, take the autism test online now ready to take control of your mental health journey getting started is easy click through our secure platform in initiate initiate the online uh, autism test and begin the process of discovering your cognitive profile our goal is to empower you with knowledge and insights that pave the way for informed decision making and effective management of autism uh, before it's okay not start the test yet but it says the autism spectrum quotient or quotient quotient aq test will help you recognize the signs and symptoms of adult autism this is a thorough test that takes 10 to 15 minutes to complete internationally recognized the autism test is recognized by the national institute of health nih a validated tool used by the nhs extensive research ensures the accuracy and reliability of its results and comprehensive the test helps you understand if you are likely to have autism traits and to identify areas where you might benefit from support. However, it cannot, this is important, it cannot replace, it doesn't say this is important, just I know that this is an important bit. Uh, however, it cannot replace a full assessment and it should not be used to self-diagnose or decide upon a treatment plan. It's a great first step on your journey, giving you a better understanding of whether you have significant autism traits and if an autism assessment is worthwhile considering. Uh, how reliable is the autism screening test? Oh, okay. So they're offering. This is. They. I guess they're trying to. Yeah, they do offer things to, to pay for as well. Let's have a look at this. Look at this. Let's have a look. 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 Oh wow! Fees and flexible payment plans at Diverse Diagnostics. At Diverse Diagnostics, we make clinical care more accessible to everyone who needs it. Okay. Oh, what are you doing? Okay. For what? Oh, adults. Here we go. Patient-focused, psychiatrist-led, our assessment fees. Adult autism screening. £440. One hour clinical session with adult 
consultant psychiatrist uh, will screen for autism spectrum disorder mental state completed and then report with recommendations if further evaluation of of autism is required uh, then you've got adult autism assessment 2400 huh? uh, clinical, clinical interview with consultant psychiatrist standardized scales sent out what do they weigh you hmm. neurodevelopment do neurodevelopmental screening questionnaire with consultant psychiatrist ados dash two assessment completed face to face and then feedback to the individual all asd assessments and reports are completed within eight weeks pending that all information questionnaires are returned within requested time frames and then you've got the adult adhd assessment i don't have a no i wouldn't i might do it on my test but no i've not got adhd from what I know, I know a little bit about ADHD and I don't fit that criteria at all. I'm way too slow. I'm, and I'm not saying being autistic, but it's nothing to do with autism. I just, I am not fast, not super like, I don't know. I got to stop. I feel like I got to stop talking. Like I might get myself in trouble. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Mind you, the podcast won't be very good if I stop talking. Mind you, it might be better. It might actually be... If I just sat here and didn't say anything, it might be the best podcast I ever made. Oh, think about it. Right, so should we do the test? Come on, baby, let's do the test. Start autism test. I hope it gives you answers while I'm actually doing it. You know I mean, like at the end of the 15 minutes rather than having to send off for it or whatever so take the autism test online now ready to take control of your okay i've already read this uh getting started is easy click through to our secure platform initiate the online autism test and begin the process of discovering your cognitive profile our goal is to empower you with knowledge and insight that paved the way for informed decision making and effective management of autism so here we go it's the first question i prefer i prefer to do things with others rather than on my own definitely agree slightly agree slightly disagree Definitely disagree. Let's read the question again. I prefer... You can maybe answer some of these questions for me uh, based on maybe what you know about me. I prefer to do things with others rather than on my own. Definitely agree. Slightly agree. Slightly disagree. Definitely disagree. Definitely disagree. Okay. I prefer to do things the same way over and over again. Definitely agree, slightly agree, slightly disagree, definitely disagree. What do you think? I prefer to do things the same way over and over again. Definitely agree. To be fair, it's not that I like to, just that's what I like to do. It's just, I don't know. If I try to imagine something, I find it very easy to create a picture in my mind. Definitely agree, slightly agree, slightly disagree, definitely disagree. Uh, no, not great with uh, the old 
creating pictures in my mind. Yeah. I definitely disagree. I do not find that easy. Um, I frequently get so strongly absorbed in one thing that, <laughs> that I lose sight of other things. The reason I'm laughing is because it's just ridiculous how, how I am like that. I strongly get, I frequently get so strongly absorbed in one thing that I lose sight of other things. Definitely agree. I mean, the four choices definitely agree, slightly agree, slightly disagree, definitely disagree. Um, yeah, it's, there's no two ways about that. I often notice small sounds when others do not. Um, I definitely agree. I'm quite aware of sounds. But I'm ordered I'm an auditory person. I'm very auditory. I'm very listeny. Um I love well I don't love all sounds, but I do like right now, as I'm talking to you, we've got the wind, I've got the window open. And there's wind outside. And it's lovely. I just love the sound of the wind. Not one a minute. Or out in it. But when I'm inside and it's windy outside. Depends on how loose the tree is outside the house. I've said I don't want a tree falling on me. But I do like. We've got a huge tree. Outside. Massive. If it ever did topple. It would take away the whole. Take the whole building away with it. Honestly. It's huge. One of the biggest trees I've ever seen in my life. That was a bit of a lie. It probably isn't, but it is quite big. It's a very big tree. Okay, I often notice small sounds when others do not. You know, sometimes I think, am I being paranoid? Like, I'm hearing things. Am I listening for things? Or I just hear stuff? I mean, I even hear stuff that Vinny doesn't hear. But he hears stuff that I don't hear. So, you know, between the two of us, it's constant barking from both of us, really. Uh, okay, anyway, next one. I usually notice car number plates or similar strings of information. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Strings of information... Yes, but not like hugely. Do I? Do I? I do notice things. I do. I do notice things. Similar thing. I'm going to say slightly agree. Not, not, not definitely agree but it's not as strong as that definitely agree I notice every single I do notice number plates I look at number plates but I just I'm not obsessed with number plates I don't drive so cars are not really that important to me but yeah I don't know I'm going to say slightly agree with that one a bit uncertain. Other people frequently tell me that what I've said is impolite, even though I think it's polite. Well, I'd have answered this definitely agree 20 years ago because I was getting in trouble a lot. Not like bad trouble, sometimes bad trouble when I was younger, but not just people get upset with me because I said something that they didn't like and I didn't mean it rudely and it happened when I was a kid 
and I didn't mean it rudely. And then I got to my 20s and I started being rude on purpose because I realized that people were going to take offense anyway, so I might as well just be offensive. I'm not proud of it, not like that anymore. Well, 20s and 30s and 40s. I stopped last week. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped being rude last. I do sometimes. Um, yeah, I've been told that I'm an impolite. So I think I'm a, a polite person. It's not so much polite. I say the wrong things. And sometimes it's just from humour. Other times it's just genuine. And I've been taken the wrong way so many times. So... It's harder to answer this because I don't spend time with people anymore. The more people I spend time with, the more often I get people taking offence at what I say. It's just how, how it's happened. And that's why I learned, that's why I wanted to be a counsellor and why I wanted to learn to communicate. And I can communicate. I, I've learned to communicate, but it's in a professional way I can do it like on the phone in a call centre in a job interview I can be really good at that stuff well I was I don't know about now but when I'm no longer kind of putting any effort in <laughs> which I don't want to put effort in I don't think we what's the point if, you, if you're around someone and you're always kind of it's almost like being on eggshells there's, there's the old cliche isn't it like having to tiptoe around and be tiptoe around verbally I don't want to have to do that anymore I spent my whole life having to do that um, when I was a kid I didn't know how to do it when I was in my 20s I didn't want to do it I didn't tiptoe around anyone and I got into all kinds of problems and then when I got to my 30s I started to learn my late 20s actually, I started to learn how to communicate. So yeah, other people frequently tell me that what I said is impolite, even though it's I think it's polite. I'm not sure if I think it's polite. I definitely say stuff, even now there's dog walkers, sometimes they just, they look at me like, why you just, you can't, can't say that. But just, well, sometimes they say you shouldn't say that, but I'm just messing around and it's not serious. Uh, so I'm going to say slightly agree, uh, but it would have been definitely agree in the past. But I've even upset people online in the past, so I'm going to say definitely agree. I know my family would agree with that. Uh, people at the Buddhist Centre would agree with that. It's... I don't know the right thing to say to people. You know? Because just sometimes, sometimes I'm alright, but... When I'm... This is the next one. When I'm reading a story, I can easily imagine what the characters might look like. No... No, when I'm reading a story, I don't really do the visual side of it. It's for me, it's more the the verbal. The I suppose there might be some visual, but it's like little little pictures, perhaps every now and then. You know, it's not it's not the same as watching a movie because I I watched I read yeah. I saw Gremlins when the first time I, uh, Gremlins was one of my favourite movies when I was a kid that and the Karate Kid probably I mean nothing ever, is ever going to really match the Karate Kid in some ways or Enter the Dragon because of my love that I had for martial arts and karate but I remember I, I, wa I watched Gremlins loved it brilliant it's just such a brilliant film the second one was horse. It, it just wasn't. I mean, the second one was funny and stuff, but it wasn't. 
I just didn't I didn't kind of kind of get why they went the way they did on the second one. It was just utter chaos, and I understand why the gremlins and stuff, but just there's something really maybe it's it's quite Christmassy the first one because there was snow I suppose and so I watched the film loved the film I read the book and it was a completely different experience because it it just to me it was there was no I loved the book as well because I'd seen the movie first I could kind of almost picture it a bit you know had a bit more of a a little bit of a visual going on but I didn't need the visual it's more about the the words and the verbal side I think I think um so yeah definitely disagree with that I'd I can easily imagine what a character might look like no I'm fa- that's part partly I don't I, I'm more into I'm more into f- um, not textbooks but I like to read books about a subject you know uh, whether it's self help whether it's about learning to do something um, okay, I, I can do fiction but at the same time, you know, the fiction is it's about how how good the words are, how how funny. Like Woody Allen, for example, some of his earlier books were so funny. I found them really funny. And there was no even the gags were just it was just funny. So much of it was verbal. <sighs> okay. Right, this next question, this next question. Now, I would have answered no to this 20 years ago. Honestly, I'm laughing, kind of laughing, because I'm just thinking about the last six years, nearly seven years, blimey, of me doing these Let Me Boy to Sleep podcasts. And whether or not you, how you would answer this on my behalf Okay, so the next question, or the next statement, and then the, there's definitely agree, slightly agree, slightly disagree, definitely disagree. Okay, you ready for this? I am fascinated by dates. And that isn't the fruit or the romantic experience. I am. It doesn't say that in there. I am fascinated by dates. Well, I've got a kind of a new person came into my life this year, just a, like a new friend or whatever, and she kept, kept pulling me up on it. That because and I talk, I and someone mentioned it in the podcast, and I seem to mention it's not dates as in the fourth of. January 1973 I don't do dates like that but I definitely have a date mapping thing so I don't know if that's what they mean or do they mean I'm fascinated by actual particular dates in history because I'm not however if you ask me about November 2023 or you ask me about April 1991 no 1990 rather or January 23rd I think it was uh, 1991 or March 1997 87 rather or August 1988 or beginning of September rather 1988 or December 1988 or January 1989 
or you know I can I can tell you stuff that happened in my life at those periods so am I fascinated by dates I don't know definitely agree slightly agree is that fascination or is it just mapping for me it just says like mass it mapping I'm not I'm not fat I don't find the dates interesting in themselves it's what's connected to the dates that's interesting or it's just keeping a track of my life I'm going to put slightly agree because I'm not going to I don't know if, if I should or not okay this is the next one. This might be all of them now. Uh, in a social group, I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. Dis <laughs> Blimey. Definitely disagree. I really struggle with this. This is one of the things I struggle. I can't do it. I can't do it. I have to walk away sometimes. Sometimes I can't walk away because, you know, for, for example, if it's... When I was at university, we used to go out for dinner. We used to go out in the evening sometimes for drinks and stuff. And they'd all be talking over each other sometimes. And I couldn't follow it. The only conversation I can follow is the one that I'm doing and talking in. I can listen. I, I can. But I can't follow a group talking. I think, wow, I'm really, an experience I remember, and this was, this is back in 2000 and, I'm trying to think, probably around 2011, no, 2012, yeah, it was just after I got my diagnosis for bipolar, and that was December 2011, so 2012, I was in a, and they used to have these groups, which was for the counsellors, just to get together, and it was continuing, continuing um, professional development, I think it's CPD or something, continuing professional development, and we'd all get together, and we'd do like a day, like a Saturday morning or something, on a subject. Uh it could be on it, any kinds of things. It could be like a new law, uh, a new law that's just come in. Uh, it could be something to do with first aid, maybe. So, you know, whatever it is. So I went along to this thing. And we broke up into groups to talk about what had been discussed. And there was, I think, f five of us. And the other four people were literally all talking at the same time. Not not to each other, but just talking over each other at the same time. And I'd, I got very, very anxious, to be honest. Very, very. So, in a social group, I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. Definitely disagree. Man, no, that's really, oh, it's awful. I can't even keep track of someone's conversation when I'm with them if it's in a noisy environment. If there's if there's other people talking at a table, all I'd want to do is listen to them. I really, really have found it difficult in the past. That was a weird noise. Okay. The next one is, I find social situations easy. Mm -mm, let me think. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree. Slightly agree. Slightly disagree. Definitely disagree. Yeah. I find social situations easy. No. Not one bit. Now, a relative of mine recently, when I went to a family gathering, said to me, oh, but you're so good, you're, you're lively and you're talkative. And like, 
yeah, but you don't understand. It, it's, I have to work up to this. I have to, and he couldn't, it's like, oh, so you don't like being around us? It's like, no, you don't, you're not getting it. You don't understand how, um, it's so hard to explain. It's just really hard, but, um, with people I don't know, you know, if I've been to, probably the worst ones are like weddings, uh, well, funerals are by far the worst, but that's because it's it's a funeral, man. You know, it's I've never been to a good funeral, but weddings. I've been to a few weddings that have been big. Four, four recently. Well, in the last. Uh, 20 years 15 years or whatever I've been to four big weddings and I was actually the, the the bride's groom or whatever the groom groomsman one of the groomsmen on one of them and that was my friend and then I went to my bro brothers and sisters wedding no, they weren't marrying each other don't worry we don't live in Norfolk do 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 Norfolk's brilliant I'm just joking but they do, they do do that. No, they don't. Um, they do. So, where else? I, oh yeah, my, one of my friends got married as well. And all of those occasions, I had to drink alcohol and get completely blottoed. I say I had to, I couldn't cope. I just couldn't cope being there just really really just it was too much anyway being on a bus oh it's just yeah I don't even like going into McDonald's anymore it's just sit there was a time I was just I used to be all right I think kind of I don't know did I but yeah just anyway I tend to notice details I would do not. I'm going to say I definitely agree with that. I notice things. I notice when someone's had their hair cut or they've got a different hairstyle, even if I don't see the person very often. I just, I notice things like that. I don't know why. I don't want to, because I've got no interest in someone's hairstyle. But, yeah. I also notice things that have always been there as well. <laughs> I noticed that's like, wow, have you seen, like, blimey, how long has that been there? It's been there for 10 years, Jason. Like, oh, okay. So, yeah, I tend to notice details that others do not. Yeah, it's usually really pointless stuff. Like, just unnecessary. Almost irrelevant to the conversation sometimes. There was one thing, I remember I had a conversation with this uh, person and this is a few years ago now. And she didn't understand why I was listening to her. Because she said something and then she said it under her breath. Said, and I answered and he said, why are you on? like, were you listening to me? I said, what do you mean was I listening to you? Do you... I listen to every word everybody says. That's the problem. I hear everything people say. I'm listening. I don't necessarily want to listen, but I do. If you're in a conversation with me, I'm listening. Although I find it hard to listen if there's other people in the room. Because I'm also listening to them. That's when it just gets too hard, but... Yeah, I, te I tend to notice things, de notice details that others do not. Yeah. Oh, this other one, this next one's just a funny one because what do you think my answer is going to be for this one? I would rather go to a library than a party. Let me think.
I've never once enjoyed a party. Honestly, even a party that's been thrown for me, which has happened once, I didn't even enjoy it. I mean, I I love the fact that it was done, but I didn't enjoy it because it just I didn't like the attention. I didn't like yeah, just the social aspect. And I no. <laughs> um, I'd rather go to the library than a party. I'd rather do most things than go to a party, to be honest. So I definitely agree. But libraries are cool. They got books. Although the one in town it seems to be a place for um people to spend time in during the day what well, you know in between i don't know just it's it isn't quite the same as other libraries that I've been in so the next one I find making up stories easy. Yeah, <laughs> definitely agree. Um, I think I can't improve that one. I do, I don't know why. This is probably the opposite to... Um, this probably goes against what I should be. But I do, I can, I can make up stuff very easily. I do it all the time, don't I? I do it with my recordings very regularly. Um, I find myself drawn more strongly to people than to things. Definitely disagree. The only people I find myself drawn to generally are the ones that I'm attracted to. Or I'm very interested in it and that doesn't happen very often. Next one, I tend to have very strong interests which I get upset about if I can't pursue. Definitely agree. There's no no two ways about that one. Yeah. Um I enjoy social chit chat. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, generally I don't, but I'm not going to put definitely disagree, because occasionally, provided it's not in a social place with lots of people, if it's just like, uh, you know, what's your dog's name? It's Vinny! Alright, see ya, that's, 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 yeah, I'm okay with that. So, I don't necessarily, because I don't know what to talk to people, I don't know what to say to people. With Vinny, there's a focus. Now, if I was walking through the park on my own, and people were stopping, well, I wouldn't stop, I wouldn't talk, but unless I knew them to say hello to. So, unless there's an actual reason for a conversation, there's no point. Which I guess social chit chat is a conversation without a reason. It's like a pointless conversation. And even though I'm talking to people, other dog owners, dog walkers, there's a reason for the conversation because we both have dogs and it's a commonality. Uh, so it's, it's it doesn't really feel like chit chat. There's a purpose for it. There's a reason. Yeah, so I'm going to put, I slightly disagree because I do have chit chat, but it's because of Vinny. Apart from those that I actually like, and then it isn't chit chat. I have, you know, I've had quite serious conversations with dog walkers. So, yeah. Um, when I talk... It isn't always easy for others to get a word in edgeways. Yeah. See, you're not going to know this. Because, those listening, because you've... Probably none of you have actually had a conversation with me. But 
but I the reason why I do monologues, which is I guess this is what this is a monologue, it's, it's me talking, is because it's it's not it's not just that I love the sound of my own voice because I don't particularly like the sound of my own voice. I think I've got an okay voice. People told me that I got a nice voice, but nice and soothing and boring, nice and boring. I don't want to be boring. Do you ever notice that? Have you ever thought, well, not notice it, but you ever thought that maybe I don't want to be boring? <laughs> I'd like to be thought of as exciting, and you know, I don't, I don't. That you know, if I if I met someone and they came on a date with me and they went home and spoke to their friends and. Like, oh, he's so boring. That would not be a good thing to be talked about. Like, to like, she wouldn't want another date, would she? He was so boring. In this environment, yeah, being boring is good because that's the name of the podcast. It's not, I know it's not called being boring is good, but let me bore you to sleep. So when I talk, it isn't always easy for others to get a word in edgeways. I definitely agree, it's not easy, however, however, I can switch into listening mode, I do have listening mode, which is my counselling mode, where I will listen, I will sit there, and I have to turn my brain off a little bit to do it. And I will just sit, sit and listen and look and, you know. But in a normal conversation, I don't really want to do that. I just want to talk. Um, that's the whole thing. I think I was talking about this yesterday or to someone. That part of the reason why I don't like to watch TV with people is because I talk too much and it messes it up for me. Because if someone's sitting here, I will talk. They'll talk and annoy me if they're talking because they're interrupting a the show. But guaranteed, I'll talk more than they do. And I'll interrupt the film or whatever we're watching myself. I did it with my friend downstairs. He'd come up here, we'd watch boxing. I didn't even see after boxing because I was talking to him. So... I can be, and it's not even um, I'm necessarily talking particularly fast, although I can talk fast. Sometimes I trip over my own words, but it's, if I just talk at my normal speed, there's a chance that their eyes will glaze over. And I, I can kind of, sometimes tell if they're wanting I don't know, just doesn't I do wonder if whether or not they're wanting to talk to me so, okay this next one, I'm fascinated by numbers definitely disagree, move on I don't like numbers I don't dislike numbers but I've never been fascinated by numbers at all zero there's no Mathematics was not my thing, and some may say, well, what about the stats then, JJ? What about the statistics that you're obsessed with? Okay, I'm interested in those numbers. I'm interested in how many people listen. I'm interested in how, pe how many people from each country listen. I'm interested in how many people watch the videos. I'm interested in the age groups of the people who watch the videos and who listen. Just I'm interested in those statistics just to get an idea of who my audience is. That's all. Obsessed? Eh. But fascinated. I am fascinated by the stats, but I'm not fascinated by numbers in general. So I'm going to put definite, so I put slightly disagree with that. Because I am, I am fascinated by the stats, but not by numbers. Just numbers, numbers, just for the sake of it. 
I'm not interested in anything just for the sake of it, I don't think. I'm going to put definitely disagree. Because I don't think that stats comes under the category of numbers. Although it is numbers, isn't it? Uh, and I do number all my recordings. <laughs> um, and I do know how many podcast downloads I've had since I started. And I do know how many years I've been doing it. That comes under the dates really, doesn't it? I'm going to put slightly disagree, okay? So just give me a little bit edgeways, but I don't, I don't think I'm interested in numbers at all. But maybe I am a little bit when it comes to t statistics. Uh, the next one is when I'm reading a story, I find it difficult to work out the character's intentions. <laughs> um... It depends, doesn't it? It depends how it's written. It depends how it's written because some some people they're written. You can you know what the characters' intentions are because they're telling you. But if they don't tell you the characters' intentions, how are you supposed to know? You know, because that's the good thing about books is you get to find out what the character is thinking. You don't get that in a movie unless it's you know some kind of narrative going on you know in the movie like they were there you know they're talking like inside or talking actually at the camera, which is done in a few movies. I find it difficult to work out their characters' intentions unless it's obvious unless they're actually stating it verbally. Then yeah, I don't know what the character's intentions are. How would I know? There's no way of knowing, is there? Unless it's blatant. I mean, you know, if someone comes at someone, um, yeah, you know, it's okay. If someone's chucking pebbles up at a, a window, and you see that they're holding a rose and they're playing romantic music. And they're singing, reading a poem, a love poem. Then clearly they're they're asking to use a toilet. I mean, obviously that's what. <laughs> no, clearly it's a romantic gesture, isn't it? I can tell that, but it has to be blatant. It has to be just guessing. And I think that's where the problem is with some people in society is they guess. People, the amount of people I've met that think they can mind read. When they can't. No one can. We can't mind read. I don't know what anyone else is thinking or what anyone else's intentions are. Unless they tell me. And even then, they might be lying. So, you know. Yeah, the amount of times I used to read, not read, hear people say, well, I can read you like a book. No, you can't. It's a very silly thing to say. I understand if someone's got a kid and they've grown up with a kid and they've watched the kid, you know, develop from being a baby all the way to 20s or whatever. And there's certain behavior that can be predicted. You know, there's so this it's like with with him, like with Finney, I can predict some of his behavior like he's I know when he's going to do a poo. And I don't mean he crouches down, but squats, I mean. Just, I sometimes get that, okay, he wants to do a poo because of what he's doing or he's heard something. That's because ear flaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit more obvious with him. I don't particularly enjoy reading fiction. I already mentioned that earlier, so I definitely agree with that. Don't I don't read fiction at all now. There's a few fiction things that I like that I've read, but they're not fiction. They are, but it's very verbal. It's very just describing how they're thinking or what they're thinking about. 
don't particularly enjoy reading fiction. I find I find it hard to make new friends. Yeah, I agree. Definitely agree. I can I'm friendly to everyone. But I don't make friends generally. I don't I just don't I don't don't no, I don't. That's it. Simple. I find it hard to make new friends, definitely agree. I notice patterns in things all the time. Kind of. That goes that's goes that's already been kind of mentioned, isn't it? The whole you mentioned you know noticing things. I notice patterns, but it's I imagine well I'd have thought maybe one would, but there's patterns in people's behaviour. But it's yeah. All the time, no. All the time, no. Not all the time. I know. I notice patterns in things all the time. I slightly agree with that one. It's not all the time. I used to be a bit, a bit more like that when I was more socially active. By that I mean I used to go out. Notice patterns. Like a certain thing, Fridays. There's always more police sirens on a Friday than any other day of the week I'm not really sure why why would why would a Friday be like that and no other day there's yeah patterns of behaviour human behaviour I notice that with the neighbours and with people I know and it's definitely certain uh patterns there but that's because I guess I'm interested in in the psychology and stuff I suppose so I'll put slightly dis slightly agree it's not a definite on that one I would have said definitely agree 20 years ago I would rather go to the theatre than a museum I'd love to say yes. I want, I'd love to put definitely agree. But no. Definitely disagree. I'd love to be a theatre person. But. Unless I can have the theatre to myself. Yeah. So no. I'd rather go to a museum. But an empty museum. I don't want to go to a busy one. Uh, it does not upset me if my daily... <laughs> oh dear. It does not upset me if my daily routine is disturbed. Uh, definitely disagree. You know what? When I get someone knock at the door, sometimes I get so angry. Because I'm doing something. And if someone's going to come round, I can't relax until they've gone. Literally until they've been and then gone again. Because I just don't know when I'm going to be interrupted. So if I start on my coursework, if I start on a podcast, if I start watching a movie, am I going to be interrupted? And once I'm interrupted, I have to get myself back into that mode. So if I'm watching a movie, I don't want to be disrupted. If I'm reading something or I'm doing something online or whatever it is I'm doing I don't that's a routine one of my daily routines I don't like it I tell you the one I work oh man if I it's happened before not recently to be fair but I'd wake up get up and do my normal morning routine and I'd have my breakfast and I wouldn't eat it yet I'd have it and it'd, it'd be on the table here and I'd put the TV on, have a cup of tea, ready to have my breakfast, and some would knock at the door. That is the po worst possible time to knock on my door when I'm about to have my breakfast. Because first of all, I haven't eaten yet. Secondly, I don't like eating when I'm around people. Actually, not only do I not like, I don't do it. 
I do not eat with other people generally. I mean, occasionally I'll have, I will share a pizza. That uh, has happened. It's not like it never happens, but I like. It's not. It's not a case of that I'm a messy eater, although I am sometimes. I just like to be on my own way. It's not uh, a weird thing. It's just. I don't mind this little fella being with me. He can be with me all the time, whenever he wants. I'm happy for him to be with me. But I like that time on my own. That's my time. And it's part of my routine. And getting it disturbed. It... Yeah, it does upset me. I I'm, I'm not proud of it. I think it's a bit ridiculous that it upsets me. But it does. And my nan would be so annoyed with me for saying that. Because she always said to me, like, you know, people are more important than telly. People are more your, you know, even when I stopped drinking. She said, we well, still need to go to the pub. Still need to meet people. We still need to, still need to have a social life just because you're not drinking anymore. And I was like, yeah, yeah. But the only way I could be in a social situation was drinking. That I couldn't could really do it. I struggled. I didn't struggle so much with the comedy club though, because that was part of my that was my obsession, comedy. So going to a comedy club was part of my obsession. So but I didn't like to be in the audience. I liked to sit at the back or stand at the back. Because most comedy clubs I didn't pay to get into. I just... Because they knew me. So I'd go in, sit at the back and watch. Uh, or sit at the stand. So sometimes stand at the side and watch. Um, although the comedy store didn't know me. So I paid a few times to get in to see a show there. If there was like a big comedian on. But... I did perform once there and another time I called up um, what's his name Mark Thomas yeah Mark Thomas I phoned him up and he put me on as a guest so I got in for free like a comp and he I absolutely loved that man I wanted to be like him so much and I was nothing like him. It's really weird. His comedy, his style, his personality, his performance, everything about him was just perfect to me. You know, he'd literally go on stage, chat for a few minutes and say, don't worry, I've not started yet. Like, I'm, I'm much, you know, it's like, I've not started the comedy yet. I'll start in a minute. And it kind of like, if the audience weren't laughing to start with, he'd say, it's fine, I'm, I'm really good at this, don't worry. You know, usually they would be laughing anyway, but, yeah, I've not actually started yet, so don't worry. It's just like, I tried that once, didn't work. Someone said, yes, you've been on a stage for nine minutes, you have started, and it wasn't funny. Okay. Um, and I'll shout out, thanks, Mum. And that would actually get a laugh. It does not upset me if my daily routine is disturbed. Definitely disagree. I frequently find that I don't know how to keep a conversation going. Wow. Definitely agree. Unless it's someone I know very, very well. Or it's a subject that I... I'm really interested in. So there's a dog walker that's into martial arts. And we talk about that. There's another dog walker. Well, he works at the petrol station as well. He's into boxing. Me and him talk about that every time we see each other. And there's no end of talking. There's no end of a conversation. Because boxing is my favourite thing, pretty much. And it's his favourite thing. He loves football as well, but boxing is... And I'm, I'm his boxing chatty pay, pal. That's that's what it is. I got his telephone number, but I never phone him. Because we just see each other and we have a good old chin wag about boxing. 
but I can't um, the amount of times I've been talking to someone and I've just stopped talking this is in the past maybe even actually it's not that long ago recently as well and I've been talking to them and I just dry up I like I don't know what else to say I've got it's, it's partly I'm not interested in anything you're saying I'm not interested in anything that I've got to say about the subject I'm not interested in the subject we're talking about um, I don't say that out loud but it's kind of I don't really know what else I can't really contribute to this because I don't know it's weird in real life on the phone I could do it because there was a purpose I was trying to sell car insurance I could keep the conversation going for a whole hour with the single purpose of selling car insurance I could do that I did it for years but outside of that environment it was weird because I'd do that on the phone and then I'd see a colleague someone that I worked with like on a different table and I wouldn't know what to say to them even though everybody knew who I was in the department because my name was on the board I was always like in the top five sellers for at least a year and a half when I was at Church Churchill maybe top ten but generally sometimes at the top sometimes two sometimes number three so people knew who I was and everyone like acknowledged me there was about 200 maybe 200 250 people working there 200 maybe and they knew who I, you know it's not like they didn't know who I was as a person but they knew who I was because I was one of the sellers and the top seller who I was a bit in awe of he was better than me sometimes I beat him in a week but he was ultimately I mean, but what happened is my friend who was in my group he he got the most sales in one week that anyone's ever got so I think two weeks later I beat his so he's in my team but I beat him by about five I can't remember the numbers now but I, I got the most sales that anybody's ever got in the company like in uh, well in that department and in that in that, in that branch anyway I don't know because Churchill was a huge company so I, I broke the record now the other one who was a top seller completely annihilated mine like he got like 20 more 20 more sales than me in that week it's like completely Jody his name was it was so good and I kept my record for a week seriously it was ridiculous the problem is whenever we, like you'd win I don't know if it was the month for I think it was the month for you'd win a uh, they give you a chair and you put all these decorations above your desk or whatever the thing is the chair wasn't comfortable I didn't like it <laughs> and I always say can I just can I just go back to having my other chair that I normally sit in because I like to keep the same chair I actually marked it so I knew which one it was as you said they said no but we've, it's a, you're, you've got the throne because there was all sparkle all around I said no but I like my chair so anyway the what was the point of that oh yeah I struggled to talk to Jody. I got to know him a bit better because we worked at a different company together as well. But because I was, maybe cause I was in awe of him because he was the top salesperson. But I just didn't know how to talk to people outside of, and this is a reason for it. I found it difficult. There needs to be a purpose. Uh, yeah. I mean, I noticed that with the, when I was New Year's Eve at the comedy club that I was at, 
think three or four years in a row, New Year's Eve, or three years at least. Well, actually, I went to New Year's Eve probably about ten times out of a 12-year period. And come New Year's, everyone's like hugging each other, and I just hide. Because I, I don't know how to, that doesn't feel comfortable for me. And I, sometimes I'd go upstairs and just keep out of the way until it was all done, and then I'd come down afterwards. And people would say, where you been? I said, oh, just diarrhea. I didn't want to embarrass myself, you know. Um, so, I think, I think, I still remember years ago, I was talking to, what was his name? It was my manager at one of my jobs. It's like a, the boss. Lovely bloke. And, I remember just standing there talking to him and my my eyes glazed over because my mind my my whole mind just froze I like I don't know what to say now see now I would say it out loud don't know what to say now because it's funny well I find it funny and I will actually say that to people that I've run out of things to say run out of words if I'm in a rude mood, I'll say I'm bored now. But that's with people that I'm friends with. I wouldn't say that to someone I didn't know. Um, but I'd do it in a jokey way. It might be true, but I would do it in a jokey way. I'm actually not always. I'll try to. I don't. I, I don't want to be rude to people. I don't like to be rude. Or do I? No, I don't. I don't. If it's funny. But how to put everyone off you in one recording this is me, that's what I've done today probably uh, so I frequently find that I don't know how to keep a conversation going definitely agree in a, like a real life situation and the last time I had a, a proper conversation with my dad was Probably 1988. Like an actual full on heart to heart conversation. I mean, it was over a bottle of um, scotch. So I think that lubricated his his lips a little bit. Sounds weird, but you know what I mean? He, he was chatty. He's a chatty person like me, but just not with me and I'm not particularly chatty with him it's a strange dynamic don't really know um, why I just think they I think they find me annoying I think that's what it is maybe I'm just really annoying um, okay so I find it easy to read between the lines when someone's talking to me I don't know what I can't read people I don't know that's why it's really hard to trust anyone because I don't know what their intentions are I really don't I mean one of the good things about my friend downstairs Luke that's not here anymore he'd just be blatant He's blatant. He was there was no. There, I think he tried to be a bit um, sneaky to start with when we first met, but then he realised that didn't work with me. And he just because I don't, I can't, you know, I can't read between the lines. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I can. I mean, if you, if I'm around someone, I get to know them really, really well, like with him. I could learn, I kind of noticed certain things that he did and he didn't mean it when he said it or he was trying to get me to offer him help without asking for help. It's, but that was, I mean, you know, we were very close. The closest, pretty much, friendship I've ever had because we would, saw each other nine years we saw each other like nearly every day, sometimes multiple times a day. 
so we yeah it's probably the I'd say it's not not a close just the closest friendship the closest relationship I've ever had like um, emotionally closest more than any girlfriend more than any family member is I didn't feel there wasn't a romantic relationship at all and but I couldn't have been closer to him if if he was my own brother you know it's and I don't have really that kind of relationship with my brothers I mean I've I love my little brother but I don't think he likes me particularly so yeah and my nan different relationship but I didn't I didn't spend huge amounts of time with her I spent huge amounts of times with him like my friend you know we was in and out of each other's flats constantly we walked we used to go out every day like for walks and take well the first the first thing we used to take the two ferrets out because he had a ferret and I had Andre and then he got a dog so we used to take the dog out and then I got this one so we used to take both the dogs out so we always had like reasons to go out and um, yeah I got to know him but reading between the lines I need people just to be honest like what what is it you want I mean I'll give you an example I might have mentioned this the other day and and I didn't mean it rudely genuinely didn't but uh, one of my friends phoned up and I, I said you alright then you okay and she was being nice to me but she was being super nice like buttering me up and like okay there's there's no reason to ever butter me up unless you're gonna eat me <laughs> no i just i don't need that i just um a flattery means nothing to me really I, I i like honest so i would never want anyone to say oh i love what you do i love your recordings if it's not true I only say it if it's true. If it's not true, it means it's just pointless. There's no point. And flattery, like, come on. Yeah, you, know, you ever get that when you um I did a I think I I might sh trimmed my beard or had a haircut and a friend of mine says, Oh, you look ten years younger I'm like shut up. It's not true, is it? And she laughed. I said, like, it's not true. Why are you saying that when it's not true? look 10 years and I look 10 years younger so I have my hair cut what what if I will trim my beard well never never 10 years well I wear some clothes change every item of clothing I end up well I look five years old will I like, come on don't be so silly there yeah. <laughs> but I think some people just like giving compliments which maybe I should learn from that maybe compliments is a good thing um I just don't see the point unless I mean it so another thing like this friend when I was at university very close we were and pretty much my best friend at the time and without her I would not have got my degree 100% without her without her support I would not have my first degree which is, I think, a little bit why I'm maybe struggling a bit with the the new, the new degree I'm doing because I've got no one to, I've got no sort of support, <clears throat> like who's also doing the course, you know, but um, that might change over time. So we went out, me and probably four other people from the course. And one of the other people, I think like three of the, it was all women, not that that really makes any difference, but they were all going on about how wonderful my friend looked. Oh, you look so good. Your dress is so lovely. Oh, your hair is so nice because she'd made herself up before going out and everything. And it might have been for like a special occasion, maybe the end of course, you know, we'd finished our degree course and we were going out. And they were all like, oh, and I'm just sitting there thinking, what are you all doing? And one of them said to me, 
doesn't she look lovely? And the other, everyone else looked at me, waiting for me to answer, except my friend, because she was just smiling. And I said, I don't care how she looks. She's my friend. I don't care what she looks like. I've got no interest. It's, it's, and they couldn't understand it. And I, was I being rude? I wasn't being rude. But I think they might have took it as being rude. But I don't think my friend did. But then I don't know. It's hard to tell. <laughs> I mean, she often poured beer over my head. So I don't know if that was the reason. Uh, <laughs> uh I find it easy to read between the lines when someone is talking to me. No, I definitely disagree with that. Uh, the next one. These have got to be coming to an end soon, surely. It said 15 minutes. I've been talking for an hour and 25 minutes. I usually concentrate more on the whole picture rather than the small details. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know how to answer that one. I'll be honest with you. I'm really not really sure what that means. Usually concentrate on more on the whole picture rather than the small details. I'd say probably not. You can't have the whole picture without the details. If anything, I'll probably get stuck on the details. trying to think of a context for that what do I do like making the podcast do I focus on the whole thing rather than the small details no I focus on the small details each individual thing that needs to be done making the recording editing the recording processing the recording getting an image creating an image for the recording um, making a video on YouTube from the recording Yes, I think it's details. Definitely disagree. Then I usually concentrate. No, I do. I disagree. I'm not a very. I'm not. I am not very good at remembering phone numbers. <laughs> Definitely agree. I'm not remember. I don't remember. Who does? Who needs to? Although, I do remember two. There's a old a friend I used to have. Oh, he, he, he stopped being my friend do you want to know why when um, Robin Williams passed away there was a thing on you on Facebook where people were posting his picture as their profile and I just followed I was just following the crowd having been a huge fan of Robin Williams when I was younger I grew up watching him on Mork and Mindy and I I even loved him in Popeye you know, I wasn't one of the older people that like fell in love with him when he was doing um like from Aladdin and stuff like that. No, I I'm early early days. And also uh when I got into stand up, you know, he was the first person I went to like to watch and stuff. So anyway, I posted his picture, my friend as my profile picture. It was only temporary. It was as a tribute to him. And my friend told me I was sick in the head for doing that. I found that a little bit rude. So I I said, I don't think you think you're correct. I can ask people on Facebook what they think. And he said, I go and ask them. So I did. And maybe he didn't like the way I'd worded it, but I wasn't supposed to be rude to him. But I just told the truth. I said, my my friend said I'm sick in the head for posting a picture of Robin Williams as my profile picture as a tribute to him, like many other people on Facebook. What do you think? Do you think I'm sick in the head for doing this? And weirdly enough, I got quite a few replies to that. And none of them agreed with my friend. He read those comments and never spoke to me again. 
it's like it was his idea for me to ask people I, I don't know anyway that was I, st I know yeah I remember his telephone number even now it's etched in my brain because I, I phoned it so many times in the 80s and the 90s I was friends with him for a long time silly thing to fall out over uh, another thing he didn't like is my recordings when I used to talk and I used to do these recordings long before I started doing these recordings so the let me boy to sleep I didn't start till 2018 I think it was February 2018 but I'd already done this style of stuff many years ago uh, I think this, the first ones were the I used to call them hypnotic buffet this was 2011 probably so around 2011 12 13 I was doing stuff like this during that period I just had different names for them uh, thinking out loudly or think thinking out loudly was one um, or thinking out quietly thinking out quietly thinking out quietly I don't know but there was I had different different names for them and he said that I was ill he thought I was ill because of the rambling and the, the nonsensical kind of maybe because it wasn't as structured as he'd like it to have been I don't know and that's why I advise anyone that knows me not to listen to my recordings so yeah he just does, does I think he it's almost like he lost respect for me which surprised me because I didn't think he had any respect for me to start with I don't need people to respect me um, I'm not very good at remembering phone numbers definitely disagree or definitely agree I'm not very good at remembering numbers but I remember his number and I remember my dad's landline telephone number the only two numbers I remember I don't know what my own number is okay I don't usually notice small changes in a situation or a person's appearance see I, will, I do notice I just don't care so I had a neighbour yesterday I said well have you had your haircut he said yeah said, oh cool I just I do notice small things but generally I'm not interested in the small things necessarily but I do notice yeah yeah I do notice small things uh, changes in a situation a person's appearance yeah if someone's wearing something different to what they normally do because I get to know people especially with my eyesight is quite good so I I know people by what they're wearing and what kind of dog they've got so if someone's got two dogs they've got a different dog or they're wearing a hat or whatever it's like throws me off a bit especially this time of the year because we've had months where it's not really had much rain and now everyone's covered up with uh, raincoats and rain mats and stuff and I don't know who they are anymore now but before they always got wearing the same jackets same coloured jackets and the way they walk I could always tell my friend by the way he walks well the way he used to walk rather um, he had long legs long legs tiny body <laughs> <laughs> no he had normal body as well he had long legs um, I don't I don't I usually don't notice small changes in such a person appearance I'm going to go slightly disagree because I, I notice but I don't care you know I know how to tell if someone listening to me is getting bored <laughs> oh dear um, I'm going to put slightly disagree because I've started to learn a little bit because I guess I'm starting to just ex expect that people are bored 
slightly disagree. I can't necessarily tell, but sometimes I think I can. Never used to be able to. I had no, no idea. But mm, it's a bit, of a bit of a strange one. I find it easy to do more than one thing at once. Definitely disagree. I'm not even going to give that any any more energy than it needs. I can I do one thing at a time? Yeah. I try and do more than one thing at a time. Sometimes, like, um, Let's say I've got the laptop and I've got the iPad and I've got two things going on at the same time. It just is hard. It's, it's painful. So I have to stop. So I'm just like, no, nah, I'm just going to stick to the one thing. Even if it means waiting around, I'll just do that. This next question. I hope the questions are coming to an end soon because it's taking forever. When I talk on the phone, I'm not sure when it's my turn to speak. You know, the phone is a different thing. It, it's a little bit harder now because I'm not used to using the phone and I, I've kind of gone a little back to... I've had that a few times when I've been speaking over the other person. It's not as easy. There was a time when I was really good on the phone. But that's what I was doing all day, every day for years. So now... Um, and I'll put slightly agree because my telephone manner isn't so good now as it was. I'm still friendly on the phone. I'm still nice and it's it's fairly easy, uh, not as easy as it used to be, to talk to people on the phone. But there's no, a lot, yeah, it's, I do have a tendency of talking over people. I try not to, but yeah, it's hard. I enjoy doing things spontaneously. Uh, I do. I like to have the freedom to do what I want when I want. But there's a lot of limits to that anyway, so I can't really do what I want when I want all the time. But it's nice to have some kind of structure. But doing things spontaneously, slightly disagree because I have done some spontaneous things. In fact, probably there are times if I'm in a bit of a an upper mood where I would do be very spontaneous and it hasn't always worked out very well. But I'm trying to base it on like a normal kind of, a normal period, a normal kind of mood period. Uh, I'm often the last to understand the point of a joke. You know, weirdly enough, that is tr sometimes true. I'm not always the quickest when someone's told a joke. Which I, is weird considering I'm arguably a little bit of a joker myself, verbally at least. But I don't always understand when someone else is doing a joke. Because I just goes back to not really knowing someone's motivation or what is their intention. Yeah. I'm a little bit slow sometimes. Uh, I'll put slightly agree. Not definitely. It's not always a time, all the time. But it has happened a lot. I find it easy to work out what someone is thinking or feeling just by looking at their face. <laughs> yeah, sure. Definitely disagree. I don't know. The amount of people that say one thing and they've got a different expression on their face. But... There's no way of knowing. I mean, I mean I've said to people in the past, are you upset with me? And said, no. Or tell your face. And it's like, I don't know. Just by looking at their face, no. Sometimes. It's not easy though. And sometimes it's 
very obvious, isn't it? If someone's like angry or delightfully happy, that you can see it. But it's not usually just the face, because if someone's happy, they're normally floating around like a butterfly, aren't they? Um, if if there is an interruption, I can switch back to what I was doing very quickly. No, I do struggle with that. No, I slightly disagree. Okay, I can get back into it, but it takes a little bit of doing. Sometimes I won't get back into it at all. Sometimes I forget what I was doing. I get interrupted and I get sidetracked. And I move into a different... It's almost like I get my, my rail tracks onto a different rail. My my, my, my tracks onto a different rail. And it goes in a, in a new direction. That's why I don't like interruptions. I am good at social chit chat. Definitely. Yeah, I'm not really very good at just chit chat. Not. No, it bores me. I don't see the point in it. Generally, unless it's a reason for it, I like there has to be a, a reason for a conversation. That's what I, I for me. Um, I mean, I've been told in the past that I can be too serious. Uh, why are you talking about a serious subject? Well, this is a party. <laughs> it's like, okay, uh, what else am I supposed to talk about? So, people often tell me that I keep going on and on about the same thing. Uh, yeah, I do have a tendency of doing that. I learnt not to, but didn't stop me wanting to. Does that make sense? I only want to talk about what I want to talk about, whatever I'm interested in. And... Yeah, that is, I do have a tendency of going on. I mean, you can answer that. You listen to my podcast. Do I have a tendency of going on a bit? Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely agree with that one. I do. People don't say it so much to me, to my face anyway. But then I don't have much activity or much contact with humans anymore. I used to get. Yeah, people used to mention it a fair bit when I was younger. I think I think people used to avoid me sometimes because of it. When I was young, when I was young, I never needed anyone. When I was young, I used to enjoy playing games involving pretending with other children. Yeah, I did, actually. Yeah. Did I enjoy playing games with other kids? Not really, just generally, but friends? Slightly agree. Not definitely, because I didn't really have many friends. And, but... You know, it's a time when I was... I mean, I worked in a... Yeah, I was a kid, I had worked in a detective agency... I wasn't really a detective. It was a pretend detective agency. There weren't real guns we were shooting each other with. I mean, to be fair, if you was in a detective agency, you probably wouldn't be shooting each other, would you? Um, there was a time when I used to... I don't know if I... It, I don't know if it was pretend, though. <laughs> to me, I think it was real. You know, when I used to believe I had superpowers and I could walk through walls and I could become invisible and I could fly and all those things. I actually believed it. I believed I could change the weather. I believed it. It wasn't like make-believe. I actually believed it. But anyway, I'll just leave that as slightly agree. I, st I like to collect information about categories of things. For example, types of cars, birds, trains, type of plant. Not that kind of stuff, but 
I'm interested in, I mean, for me, one of my big things as far as information goes would be boxing. I like to look at uh, the backgrounds, the fights, and you know, of different boxers. Um, yeah, that's probably the only thing I really collect these days is more the boxing. Do a lot of information about boxers. But not lots of different things, just the one, just boxing. Or whatever I'm interested in at the time. Used to be websites, used to be martial arts, used to be comedy. I mean, I was studying comedy for years. Uh, I'm never any good at it, though. Um, so I'm going to put slightly agree because I don't it's not for everything I find it difficult to measure what it would be like to be someone else how how would you how could you how could you how is it, is it even possible to imagine being someone else can anyone do that I mean come on definitely agree I find it difficult to imagine what it would be like to be someone else how could anyone, how could you imagine what it's like to be another person? I'm just trying to think, how? how? That just doesn't seem possible. I like to plan an act, any, I like to plan any activities I participate in carefully. Yeah, I do. I like to plan things, I like to, anything that I'm involved in, I like to know, yeah, if we're going somewhere, like, I, I don't have done anything social for a long time, but I like to know where we're going, what time we're going there, what time, you know, just like the logistics, like how we're going to get home, how much it's going to cost, what do we need to wear, you know, lots of different things, so, yeah. I like to plan. I like to know what's happening in advance. See, so, yeah, I agree with that. I enjoy social occasions. Definitely disagree. Move on. Doesn't say that. It just says I enjoy social occasions. No, I don't. I find it difficult to work out people's intentions. Definitely agree. I don't have a clue what people's. I mean. I think over time, if someone's just ripping you off and continuously asking for stuff and gives nothing back and it's just, you know, and lying potentially, then yeah, eventually it's like, okay, that person's intentions is not a good intention. So let's keep away from them. But it's hard. It's hard to know. And I, I struggle to say no to people. That's the problem. So I find it difficult to work out people's intentions. Definitely agree. New situations make me anxious. Definitely agree. Blimey. I enjoy meeting new people. Definitely disagree. Um, I am a good diplomat. I am. I agree. I am a good diplomat. I'm a peacekeeper. I would do everything I can to keep the peace between people that are in conflict to try and keep the peace with the neighbours and yeah very I'm a good diplomat I would say now I might not understand the word diplomat so I've, I might have got that wrong but I think I have understood it and the next question I am not very good at remembering people's date of birth There's only, only people's day of births I know is my brother's and my dad's. That's it. And mine. That That is it. No, and my friend who's not here anymore. So, but that was more because I, I used to do a lot of phone calls and 
Um, I, I, I knew his details off by heart because I had to keep giving them over the phone. He'd be with me when I was doing it. Stop kicking me, Vinny. But he, yeah, I knew his date of birth. So, but other than that, my three brothers and my dad, those dates of birth are etched in my brain. Also, I'm just trying to think. I think my dad had the same date of birth as my friend. So maybe that's, well, you know, date of the, date, date and uh, month, not year. Anyway, no, I, I'm not sure. So not really, I don't know anyone else's date of birth. So I'm very good. I'm not very good. So I say definitely agree. I'm not very good because the ones I've got, it's not hard to, to how, it's not hard to remember something that you've known since she was could first read and write and speak you know i learnt my brother's dates of birth <sighs> and made another weird noise again i made my i, I learnt my brother's date of birth both all three of them my, the first two bearing in mind one is exactly one week before mine the other one is the month after mine and the younger one is the day before mine. So they're, them two are very easy to remember. The one, one week exactly before mine. One is one day before mine. You know, and then my dad's is the same date as my brother's, but it's a different month. So, you know, it's, they're, they're easy to remember. But, Anyone else's date of birth? My stepmum is one of two different dates. It's either the 13th or the 16th or the 19th of that month. Uh, I find it very easy to play game. Does anyone remember telephone number, uh, dates of birth? Isn't that, isn't that the same as telephone numbers, dates of birth? They're kind of just, why would you remember it? Uh, I find it very easy to play games with children that involve pretending. I'm not even sure about that, to be honest. Um, I mean, I used to be, I used to have some goddaughters and they'd be like playing, having cups of tea and stuff. And I found it a bit boring, to be honest. A bit pointless. And I don't know what I was like when I was a kid. But I can go along with pretend. I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, I find it very... I'm going to say slightly agree because I'm kind of a little bit in between on that one. Right. Take the autism test online now. Ready to take control of your blah, blah, blah. So it's, they want my email address. Jason. Jason. I agree to allow diverse diagnostics to store and process my personal details. Oh, my personal data. Right. So I'm submitting it now. Thank you for taking the autism test. Check results. Okay. Oh, blimey. No, really? Check results. Okay. High score for autism traits. Your test results indicate a high score for traits commonly associated with autism spectrum disorder ASD we understand receiving results that indicate autism traits can feel overwhelming not really not to me anyway um, I've done these tests 20 years ago just 
it's important to remember that this test might not be accurate and it isn't a substitute for a professional diagnosis. You can learn more about autism and get assessed by a professional who specializes in ASD. Book an ASD assessment here. A 15 minute telephone consultation. Get a free 15 minute consultation. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, I'm going to save that. I don't, is there any point? Really? I mean, if I just save it, appointment. Okay, right. And if I go back to results, will it save the results? Check results. Okay, it's a very small. Doesn't give. Check it. Doesn't give. Yeah. Oh, blimey, what? Doesn't go through all the different things that I've ticked for and that, which is weird. But your test results indicate a high score. I've saved that. Right. Your test results indicate a high score for traits commonly associated with autism spectrum disorder ASD in brackets. We understand blah 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 blah. It's important that you can learn about it. right, okay. Yeah well don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I was gonna do a few different tests but this is this is the only didn't have time. So this is the end of Saturday's Let Me Boy to Sleep. <laughs> um, kind of brings us to the end of the recorded man. So thank you for listening. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, 
especially if you find like some people do and myself as well I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me and I'll just listen to it over and over again like every morning every evening There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice, you may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. And 
maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? 
That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally you breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers <sighs> producing all that life-giving oxygen Feels nice. To, if nothing else, 
just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of 
every part of your body. Muscles in your legs relax, relax. Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. Soon, the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. 
peaceful. Deeply. a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply.
spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. shins and your calf muscles, Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. to notice your forehead and your eyes Seeing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast.
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose. As you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus.
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before. And enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. And as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back, as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling. comfort that spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go. to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling. 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also Relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focusing. 
the sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and your shins are permanently I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step pre 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Seventeen. Sixteen.
empty.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one right now ten
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like you're counting down from 10 to 1, 
what do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? I could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, I do focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it removes those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. 
and as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. how much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem to sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. You can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. <laughs> when I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs and I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. Of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease your legs, it's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, the 
idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care. you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift, because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight in these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. And my toes clap. I'm so happy. And I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and the more your mind
mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each 
ますね。In your body. Effortlessly. And just observing. Sensation of letting go. Your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. You focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
there's some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down slow down, quiet down, for now. So as you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. thoughts will become more and more relaxed. Starting with number seven.
imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, nothing you need it to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing of fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing how they feel, because the more relaxed your hands feel, that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation.
starting with number Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. stuff. 
take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes through very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling of comfort. Almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are and that sense of gratitude in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally you were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or a holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive way. way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. As well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within that continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life. positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, this feels so nice, it's such a healthy place to be. physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
と、こんなにネガティビティ、it disappears. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing. Spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't, it doesn't, des- doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Doesn't it? To just to let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. And if you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say. If you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of your muscles. 
versus all of the fat or everything every hair in your body is filled with that healing energy and when your brain fills with that healing energy the feeling of comfort of relaxation increases deeply increases it's not needed not a main start to drift if that's what's needed so if you're listening to this deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is a full sleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also what will happen it feels by Pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your mind to relax. I focus on the different parts of your body, you may start to just drift, you may come back again and give me a token and I'm focusing on a different part of your body. soft drifting but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting because you alert again to your voice focusing on a different part of your body starts to relax even deeper because that drifting Basically, you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues into sleep. the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe that you move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now and you may seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing on both of your elbows. 
letting go. start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw your ears kind of area that side of your neck of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. And the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, really 
get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial for the relaxation. of the muscles in your shoulders. And now as you move down your arms, you do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to be attached, and I just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and Holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly at the same time pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again with all the big in that area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck, going back and massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. do that a few times. Sometimes we can choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. You must just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. Now I'm going to move 
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side, to the middle, in fact, to where the spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, but yet lots there to massage. one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much from your body that's not useful starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over and massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you it's actually fun to do because it is as I said like kneading bread it's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is pressing and kneading firm and gentle at the same time but it feels so releasing It's a mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massaging that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area of muscle tissue um, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest so it's all connected to your chest from your back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I can 
to the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now move off to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from you. Pretty much underneath your arm area really. To your spine. to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure from the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where they're in opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging the calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, Move 
the right and the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and to your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face, thank you, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows, Massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, and to your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and 
just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. side to the next, moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention. going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good in its massage, just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, so just below your arm all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. Just stand one side of you, like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply in harmony you feel loose you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because you do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in your stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach. Circles around your belly button. 
Sitzen. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of the thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeper those muscles in the thighs, in the front of the thighs. Moving down to the knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down the shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down onto your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles from your mind. They're going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you, and I'd like you 
it actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big blow it's just a gentle say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed and if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, just feeling where you start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds those forest the pigeons who likes to say hello sometimes and as the odd plane goes by seems important whatsoever the more candles you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out seem to 
so. simple and then we're gonna start by introducing the first candle which is a hundred Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding.
his thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide what your body starts to do, because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind, and your mind starts to slow down, and it's a nice feeling, it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you Because so often we're busy with going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you give the say so you can say oh no it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and you're like, oh, it feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose, you can just sit down for maybe an hour. Feels blissful. And just by sitting there like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. evaporate, any tensions in your 
just gradually vanish. Almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax a few, but you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go and to let your body relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding. Like you press a button and all the tension just releases. It's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. You know, it's almost like you can see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you would use to wind it up. The energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As a sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed you're not actually being aware of what you're not. Are you physically or emotionally numbed in this moment? But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, with the feelings of 
start to focus on the mind and the being and notice how it feels and come to a standstill and maybe just much much slower than before because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind helps you learn how even completely calm lucid body and mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones
Now, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing. of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in the 
basement. So let's start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Be kind of an equivalent with your feet as he's just staying with your hands, kind of playing with your ankles, moving your feet around, making your toes gentle. Very, very gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscles raising your eyebrows as it stretches to the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes to see if you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thumbs. I'd like just ask you to gently flex your thumbs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper limbs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. And noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Muscles that are brought along to the side of your neck and also lead to the top of your back, your shoulders and shoulders. And as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up. Moving your 
sensations physical sensations of how that feeling looks feels right now as we now focus our flexibles Whatsoever that is 
experience of some more than it is the pain of aching to buttocks, sides of your hips, your head physically
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself. Just starts to gradually, it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching, but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. make up the larger movements, which are always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings of just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the near the internal parts of your arms, the veins, just 
being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling and it's there the feelings on your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing they're just in one Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe find that you move the muscles a little bit. You can tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference. that connection to your buttocks and to your hips and also moving up into the middle of the back and sometimes like right now actually focus on that part, I'm going to focus on my buttocks, I'm going to focus on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit, even though I wasn't feeling anything. seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. And then it's a long chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now chest, you can see there's the collarbone 
less pain. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, as a female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not know different these days, but muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, got the muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. Just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because of my breathing. But yeah, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time, Feels okay. Doesn't feel a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also working to flex for some reason. I can actually be part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in the back. It looks quite nice actually. you want to, you can just flex and skid them out the various muscles in your body that you maybe to get more of a sense of how they feel. with a pair of part of your body. You need to be 
gentle with yourself. started this recording. Nothing to think about. You just know this to listen to. Because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. Be alive to slow you down. To your body body. Maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom. And you start maybe to Seems to run far away from the spaceship. So warm. Let's continue. 